This is KSPR News at 10. We have team coverage tonight of the stormy weather watches and warnings all over tonight. Those storms bringing with them heavy rain, a lot of lightning and high winds. KSPR's Francis Watson live in South Springfield where there are power outages. And Rachel DeRobin is live at Commercial and Grant with more on what we'll face this weekend. But first, our early warning weather chief meteorologist Kevin Lighty joins us with the latest look at the conditions. Crazy night, Kevin. It has been. We've had sleep. Thanks, Kevin. Power outages right now in South Springfield. KSPR's Francis Watson continues our team coverage. She is live there with a look at just how many people are affected. Francis? Francis Watson reporting live for us tonight. Thank you. If you experience power outages, make sure to call City Utilities to let them know where. Our team coverage continues now, moving to Central Springfield. KSPR's Rachel DeRoven is there with more on what we're facing after this stormy night. Rachel? Lee? Good advice. Thanks, Rachel. HVAC technicians say you also need to check your outdoor AC unit to make sure it's clear of plants and overgrown weeds. They say it needs two feet of space around it and four feet above it. Best Fro is cutting workers from its corporate offices in Springfield. The company confirmed today fewer than 60 employees are being laid off and they will receive severance packages. Cuts cover several departments, including full-time and part-time positions. Some workers also lost their jobs at a Bass Pro business in Nixa. Bass Pro has some 6,000 employees all across the Ozarks. Some breaking news out of the state capitol. Senator Paul Lavota submitted his resignation letter today. This comes after days of allegations that he made unwanted sexual advances toward interns. Senate President Pro Tem Tom Dempsey says he received the resignation today. Earlier this week, the Senate released the findings of an investigation into a sexual harassment claim against Lavota made by an intern this year. A second intern then came forward, claiming Lavota invited her to his apartment and sent inappropriate texts back in 2010. Lavota has denied the claims. An update now to the Gypsy Blanchard murder case. A judge found today there is enough evidence to proceed with a trial. Several prosecution witnesses testified at an evidence hearing today. Gypsy and her boyfriend, Nicholas Godijan, are charged with murder in the death of Gypsy's mother, Claudinia Blanchard. Gypsy will now be arraigned in late July. Godijan waived his right to his preliminary hearing. Right now, a lawmaker's legislative aide is in jail after allegedly choking a woman until she lost consciousness. Republican Representative Mike Kelly's aide, Colton Babb, was arrested two days ago in Columbia. He's charged with domestic assault. Babb's attorney says he denies the allegations and will plead not guilty. Woman says Babb placed a chemical-smelling rag over her mouth and nose. She told police he choked her until she lost consciousness. U.S. Department of Justice plans to release a report in the next few months on its investigation into allegations of sexual harassment at an Arkansas women's prison. Spokeswoman for the Arkansas Department of Corrections says that a three-member team from the federal department arrived at the Newport facility on Monday, and the team left Thursday. The federal agency announced in June that it would investigate allegations of sexual abuse and harassment of inmates by prison staff. Officials say the investigation involves a former chaplain suspected of having sexual relations with two different inmates. The Marion County, Arkansas sheriff lost his battle with cancer today. Roger Vickers was elected as sheriff back in 2008. He recently retired from his post after his cancer diagnosis. And prior to his law enforcement career, Vickers served in the United States Marine Corps and saw combat action in Vietnam. He was a 1965 graduate of Bergman High School. Springfield woman pleads guilty to leading a fraudulent tax return preparation conspiracy and claimed nearly $340,000 in fraudulent tax refunds. Sherry DePee pleaded guilty today in federal court. She admitted that she and her co-conspirators frauded the government by filing false claims for income tax refunds from 2009 until 2012. DePee says the money was split among all of the co-conspirators. She faces up to 10 years in federal prison without parole and a fine of up to $250,000. Big Cat from Wild Animal Safari in Stratford is recovering tonight after getting a root canal. Take a look at this. Vets perform the surgery at a center in Fairgrove. Safari workers say the five-year-old lion named Simba desperately needed the intensive work. Vets say they decided to do it after noticing the lion's teeth were getting pretty bad. This kind of surgery is very rare for lions. Vets had to prepare for a whole month before doing it. Perfect timing right here. We're about ready to start this final race. Let's go ahead and check out the pig races. Come on, guys. Let them hear you at home, too. Pick your favorite one. 
<laughs> Here we go. I'm going with number number two. It goes by fast. Go, piggies. Go. Go, piggies. Come on, two. Uh, number two. Oh, number two. I can't tell. Winning that one by the hair on his chinny chin. chin, chin, chin. chin. <laughs> it was number two in the hey, Look at that. <laughs> No, I have Squealy not. Squealy Nelson, the names are the best. The first one that won Taylor, was Jean-Claude Van Ham. John, Jean-Claude Van Ham. Oprah yep. Swine Free. Yep. <laughs> now this crazy one. stuff. A little swangin'. Kevin Lighty, Lee Moody, live at the Ozark Empire Fair. Oh. Riding the rides. <laughs> Whoop, I got a yo-yo. There they are. Hi, <laughs> right, guys. Oh, my goodness. I'm freaking out. <laughs> hey, we're flying high above the Ozark Empire Fair. Here we are, spinning around. Hey, Lee Moody, how you feeling back there? I'm, I don't want to even, like, let my hands off. My, I am white-knuckling this. <laughs> Lee Moody, we have rode rides before in the past. Silver Dollar City, we rode the roller coaster down there. What yeah. does this compare for you? Uh, this is pretty scary, actually. Weirdly enough, this is a little more freaky to me. Yeah. Uh, last year, I lost a shoe on this ride. Remember that? We did lose a shoe on this, this last year. year. I've got him strapped on, so I'm okay. <laughs> no loose objects allowed, guys. Come on out to the fair. This is one of the many things you can do. The rides, the fun, the weather is looking pretty good. We're going to be back here. Yeah, that timing is perfect. Just in time for the fair. First day. There's been many a fair. We've yeah. been so we been wet sweat. like crazy out there. The, the good thing is the humidity is going yeah. to be gone. Good. That's a huge difference. It will be. All right. Thanks, Kevin. One Ozarks Fire Department is looking to get a new truck up next. The one thing that's standing in its way. KSBR's Lee Moody and photojournalist Chris Bryant bring us part one of our special series, Jurassic Journey. The effort to get Henry to Greene County has been a long, painstaking process with a couple of unexpected detours along the way. Now, we were there as the museum's director and his crew embarked on a major dig this summer. It takes more than a thousand windswept miles and days of driving get to Henry's final resting place. It's amid a massive dinosaur graveyard in eastern Wyoming. In this landscape behind me, we found no less than 10. Museum director Matt Foyer first drawn here in June of 2013 to start digging up the largest triceratops ever found, a three-horned beast that roamed the earth 65 million years ago. If Henry was walking out here right now, um, gosh, you know, his... His back would be at 10 feet high, maybe almost 12. Um, you know, he'd be almost 30 feet in length. Big guy. The goal of this trip, to find Henry's enormous skull. If there's any bone around, it's because somebody drug it off. But before Matt and his crew could get to work on this latest dig... A lot of damage down in the Lusk area as well. Uh, mm -hmm. A friend of mine was uh, down and is uh, working on trying to help them uh, get electricity back. A nasty diversion from Mother Nature. I saw a pretty good wall of water that went through town. Is it still standing in town? That our airport is un was under two feet of water, and that's where our water wells are at. And we had about three foot of water inside the building. The tiny nearby town of Lusk almost swept away by a freak flash flood. The downtown and its businesses left battered by a wall of water, including the skeleton closet. The main impact was coming through my showroom. Is the owner, Todd Holmer, is a good friend of Matt's and a fellow dino digging expert. Just one of those things you do. You gotta, you know, he needs help. We can offer help, so let's do it. Matt and his crew forego the Henry site for a day, trading tiny excavating tools for huge shovels to clear away the leftover debris. Todd's dream business now a muddy nightmare. Just the fossil value I had in here was probably an aggregate in the two million range. But I had a triceratops skull mounted on that armature over there. That thing got rattled and washed away. It's just sad. It really is. Matt's crew of volunteers is especially hit hard by news of the lost Triceratops skull, the same crown jewel their dig this year is all about. Something 65 million years old is gone. And uh, all we can do is go back and start digging again. 
cleanup unearths a few bones here and there, but they're just a fraction of Todd's collection, a collection that was not insured. Just got to suck it up and drive on. What are you going to do? Yep. Like I said, the hill's still producing bones, so hopefully we can just keep finding more and fill in what we lost and drive on. As Todd philosophically looks ahead to better days, this day actually ends with a victory for both Todd and the volunteers. Another lost triceratops skull found downriver and relatively intact. The head is actually a replica that once called a museum home before Todd bought it. So this is, this is what we needed. Yeah. And after a quick negotiation, the head has a new home with Matt and his crew. Insurance in case Henry's real skull isn't found. Though Matt still has big hopes of finding that titanic treasure. A dream, the absolute top end dream would be the skull of Henry. The big giant horns, uh, the, 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 the massive jaws, that'd be the, the ultimate dream. Coming up tomorrow night at 10, we'll bring you that hunt for Henry's head as the crew finally gets to the dig site. See what they uncovered. That is tomorrow on KSPR News at 10. We continue our special series, Lee's Lost and Found Stories of Salvation. We are showcasing the most amazing and touching success stories from my Lost and Found Facebook page. Tonight, how your generosity helped save a badly burned cat named Church that no one thought would survive. His paws were scorched to the point that there was no tissue left on the paw. The ear tips were, were extremely burnt, you know, whiskers burnt. Church's case is one of the worst burn cases veterinarian Dr. Mike Devine has ever seen. I didn't really expect him to live. He had plastic burn to him and it was horrible. In March, Heather Danley's Ozark Mobile home burned down. She and her husband escaped with minor burns. Four of their animals did not. Church was the only one to make it out alive. Heather rushed him to the vet where the prognosis was grim. He didn't let me leave until he, you know, let me know that there was a chance that he couldn't make it, that he wouldn't make it, so. There was fluid filling in the lungs along with some of the dead, dying tissue that was sloughing off uh, within the lungs. The vet staff put Church into an oxygen chamber to try to save his life. As they fought to keep him alive, Heather, with everything she had lost in the fire, worried how she would pay for that vet care. And that's when the Lost and Found page learned about Church's story. Heather's aunt submitted him, saying that her niece was devastated and asking for any donations to help him. Once we posted him to the front page, the phones at Dr. Devine's office started ringing immediately. It actually brought tears to some of our eyes, all the people that called in. I know it. Vet tech Sally Smith says in just 15 minutes, Church's current and even future vet bills were taken care of. He does have to have eye ointment put in twice a day to help heal with his eyes. His burned feet need to be soaked and wrapped up twice a day as well. And he's lost about a half inch of his ear tips. You know, he, he beat the odds. But Dr. Devine says eventually Church will lead a normal, healthy life. A second chance he would not have gotten if not for the lost and found community's support. It's, it's amazing. It gives you uh, faith in people. Again, people still care about people. Everybody's helped so much and so thankful. As she surveys the burnt wreckage of her home, Heather says Church's survival has meant everything to her. And I don't think I'd been able to deal with the loss if he wouldn't be here. So. Knowing he's in good, loving hands. Okay, now you gotta go rest. Yeah, okay, here we go. Until he's well enough to be back in hers, has kept Heather going. I didn't realize how good people still are, and that's made me very thankful. If you are interested in finding out more about the Lee's Lost and Found effort on Facebook, just visit KSPR.com and click on this story in the special Lost and Found section at the top. You'll find a link to the Lee's Lost and Found Facebook page where anyone can post a lost or found or, as you just saw, injured animal.